I give up. I give up. It's It's been like an hour plus, I want to say. This is the longest it's taken me to work with any of the models to get at least some semblance of a complete app. I, I'm kind of stuck, right? Like, I mean, I could keep going and doing this, but we're going to stop here. All right, so as you can see, I didn't really get to the end result I was hoping for or one that was at least close to what we've seen from other models in the past. And so here are my conclusions and assessment of this new model. The first obvious observation I got out of this was it's taking way more time than any of the other models that we've used on the channel with this same prompt. That being said, it could be due to the fact that it was just announced and so there might be a high amount of demand and use that's going on at the time of this recording. So maybe as time goes on, it'll get better. And something else that I think might be contributing to the time it takes is that it feels like the model is trying to be way more thorough in assessing the prompt and then iterating through the steps it's taking to try and fulfill the original prompt. Speaking of it being more thorough, it seemed to write more tests than I've seen other models do. And it actively tried to run the tests to see the results of them get the output of it, and then based on that output, making changes to the code that it's testing. So while that's good, the one downside of that is it would run the test in watch mode using that command in the terminal. And therefore the package it was using was expecting more prompts or expecting code changes to happen before it reran the test. But the model was expecting the terminal to conclude and exit smoothly, cleanly from that command. And it just got stuck there. And it took me a while to figure out that that's what was happening. And I would have to exit out of the test running so that the model will continue running in this agentic mode. In addition to that, it kept trying to fix failing tests, but was unsuccessful in doing so and got stuck in this extra loop outside of the inner loop where it was waiting for the terminal to release and be done and exit cleanly. Number three, and a bit of a small little observation about this is that the prompt was attempting to use containers and Docker. And while I think using containers and Docker can be good in a lot of cases, it adds another level of complexity potentially for folks that are not familiar with using that. And I think that could be a downside in that. But this is not the first model I've seen doing this lately. And it seems to be a trend with this prompt, at least that I've been testing things out with. After that, once it finally seemed to come to a conclusion where I thought it was done writing the application, it actually turned out to not be complete. And I found that out when I attempted to run the application using npm run dev, which was a command in the package JSON that it provided for me. As a quick example of this, when I went to run it, I got an error saying that the logout function here was not actually implemented. And when I went to the auth controller that's being used as this for this logout route, and I searched for logout, I found that there was no function being exported here in the auth controller. So it didn't quite complete the code. And therefore, when I went to run it, it failed. The second indicator that contributed to me feeling like it didn't complete everything it wanted to do for the application was that when I finally did get it running by commenting out that route for now, it didn't have a UI associated with it. And I kind of expected it to because of the fact that it started creating the HTML template views with Pug, but it only created one for a password reset HTML page and then didn't create any other ones like an index.html or something else, some other views for that. So while it's not that big of a deal that it didn't create a UI, because we've seen it in the past where we have given this prompt to other models, it just builds out the API functionality based on that prompt and not a UI. I feel like it was attempting to start going the route of creating UI to support this as well and failed to do so. Now, from a security standpoint, when I check things, at least briefly using sneak to scan the open source dependencies and the code that it generated from the open source dependency standpoint, it came back clean. Everything that it was suggesting to use had no known vulnerabilities reported in it that sneak would bring to our attention. However, when it came to the code security, it had a few issues, minor issues, a medium severity cross site request forgery issue, and then one low severity vulnerability. However, being that I felt that the model didn't complete what it was trying to do as part of fulfilling the prompt, I told it, skip trying to resolve the tests and continue fulfilling the request from the original prompt. And in doing so, it took a bunch more time to go through and add more to the project. And as a result, it ended up creating a high severity vulnerability, a couple of high severity vulnerabilities rather in the auth controller. It's a regular expression denial of service attack, potential attack right there. And then a couple of low severity vulnerabilities that we can see here as well. So with that in mind that the model wasn't quite done fulfilling the original prompt, it likely leads to more code that it would have to generate and therefore potentially introduce more security issues into the project like we saw here. But I'm curious, have you tried out Windsurf's new model SWE1? Let me know in the comments below.
On that note, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.